Good afternoon, everybody. We're about 24 hours away, slightly more, 25, 25 and a half hours away from kickoff against the Rams. Big game, a lot on the line, and we now have a final injury report from both teams. So we can get some idea of what team we're going to have and what team we're going to be up against tomorrow evening. So let's go ahead and talk about it. And let me just say, for where we were a few days ago, this is pretty good. This is a pretty solid injury report for the Seahawks. There's not a whole lot to be upset about, assuming that the coaches are being honest with themselves and the players are being honest with themselves. We have some players that we know are nursing injuries right now who are a full go tomorrow. If some or all of those guys are messed up and can't play, but they're forcing themselves to play, like, say, Quentin Dunbar last year against Buffalo, then we're going to have a problem. But if those guys are actually good and ready to contribute positively to this team tomorrow, I, I, I think we're in a pretty good spot, or at least as good a spot as you could hope for, given where we were just two days ago. So when the dust cleared... This is what we got for the Seahawks injury report. I'll go ahead and start on our side. We'll start with the negatives. There are a couple, but not as many as we would have expected. So the first negative, of course, Dwayne Eskridge out with a concussion. No chance of him playing tomorrow night. So he's now missed four games. Um, missed about a month's worth of football. And I feel for him. I That, that was a if not a dirty hit, then an illegal hit on him in the Indianapolis game that did not get flagged, nor did it warrant a fine. How does that happen? Explain that to me. But, uh, yeah, he's missing a fourth straight game with a concussion. According to Carroll, he hasn't gotten... There, there's been no setback. He's just not ready yet. And mentally, I'm kind of still in a place where I'm having trust issues with this organization where I'm wondering if the doctors are bad or if there's something wrong with the process by which we're bringing him back. But realistically, that was a nasty-looking concussion, so him missing four games is not beyond the pale. So it sucks because he clearly can do things in this offense that nobody else we have can do. And that's not a knock on Freddie Swain, but Dwayne Eskridge has more raw talent than Freddie Swain by a long shot. That's just the way it is. So we don't have him again, and that sucks. Hopefully he's back for the next game, but I'm kind of getting tired of saying that. But that's the worst of it. The only other real negative that we know of at the moment is Chris Carson. And as you can see here, he's listed as questionable with a neck injury. I don't think he's going to play. I <clears throat> listened to some people talk about what he has. I think it's called a herniated disc. Um, they, they described it, they described the issue, they described why it would limit you on the football field, and they also said that it's impossible to believe that he's going to be better after four days. So, I don't think he's going to play, and if he does somehow play, I don't think you'll see very much of him, and I don't think he'll be that effective. Uh, the good news is, we got Alex Collins, who played a great game on Sunday, and he's clearly ready to contribute for us. And, of course, you've got your DJ Dallases and you've got your Travis Homers. Hopefully they do something positive. Um, there, there's still that intense fandom debate over who's better between those two guys, so pick your poison, I guess. But uh, we do have one guy who has proven himself to be capable of playing well so far this year. And it's going to be really important that we get something from the running game because the Rams have shown this year that you can run on them. So if we cannot take advantage of that, then... That's another strike against this offense as they're trying to uh, both grow in terms of production and in terms of the methodology by which they play football. So I don't think we're going to have Carson. If we do, cool. I will say this, though. I don't know if running into the teeth of the defense, which is what Chris Carson likes to do, is the best way to attack that Rams defense. Um, I, I wonder if maybe you're better off running to the outsides, which is what Alex Collins can be good at. That's what Shane Waldron wants to do. That's what we wish we had Rashad Penny for, because he can theoretically do that. So maybe this is not a great matchup for Carson anyway. So 
maybe it'll work out, but I, I, I know what Carson gives me. I'd prefer to have him out there, but hey, he can sit a game if it means having him ready to go for the rest of the season. But my read right now is no Carson. And the only other player listed on the final injury report is Benson Mayoa, questionable with a neck injury, but he had a full practice today. Well, theoretically, he would have had a full practice, and he theoretically would have had a full practice on Tuesday. So Carroll already basically said we think he's going to play. So I expect Mayoa to play, and I expect him to be able to be effective. And that's actually it. Now, it's not the only concern that we have as fans, because... We're smarter than just reading an injury report completely blindly and trusting everything we see in it. But that's it in terms of injury designations. Um, Brandon Shell is fully expected to play right now. He had a full practice two days in a row. Blair, going to play. Penny Hart, going to play for whatever it's worth. Metcalf is not 100%, but he's going to play. Um, and the big ones, the big ones for me, Daryl Taylor, full participation in practice theoretically today, not designated on the injury report. Carlos Dunlap, not designated on the injury report after expected after projecting to have a full day in practice today. So Dunlap, who looked like it was a long shot for him to get on the field for this game and might even miss multiple games, I guess he's okay. Or they're BSing or they're going to cram him back out onto the field a la Quentin Dunbar and watch him be completely ineffective before they realize they got to pull the plug. Both options are on the table. I have to be completely honest about these things. But Occam's razor would indicate to us that these guys are probably ready to go. So, you got Taylor, you got Dunlap, you got Mayoa. That's a good chunk of your pass rush right there. So, assuming those guys can play effectively... That excuse goes out the window. You've got your guys who you expect to be able to get to the quarterback. So either they show up or they don't. They're, they're not going to miss this game. And I'm sure that there's a there exists the possibility that they go out there and give us nothing. But for the moment, there's reason to be encouraged. And yeah, that, that's really about all there is to it. Jamarco Jones is back if he ends up needing to play. Jamal Adams, his injury doesn't seem like to be anything of significance. Uh, Lockett did not show up on the injury report at all this week, I don't think. So he's ready to rip it, ready to just go. And the only lingering question mark is Gerald Everett, who needs to test negative for COVID one more time before he can play. Now, for some reason, Carroll didn't sound super optimistic about it, but based off what I'm reading outside of what Carroll had to say today, it seems to me like he's probably going to play. So he needs one more negative test. I don't know if that test needs to come today or tomorrow. I think it's today. But if he tests negative today, then as far as I know, he's going to play. And that's going to give us not a full team, but it's going to give us as close as we could have hoped for when this week started. So you're missing some pieces on offense, but the defense, it's its a fully loaded uh, baked potato, man. It's got all the stuff on it. So you got to show up to this one because you're going to need it. We're going to need it probably. This offense is not in a state where they can take full advantage of the Rams' not good defense. So make some plays, get off the field a few times. We got a chance, but... Missing players cannot be the excuse for if this defense falls on their face tomorrow night. But we'll talk more about the game later. That's your injury report because the Rams literally have nobody. Um, Rams listed nobody injured. They got everybody. I'm not going to even spend time on that. They are healthy and ready to go. The worst you can say is that Tyler Higby might not be 100%, but he's playing. All right. I'm out of here. Go Hawks. Pretty good, guys. We can't ask for that much better. See you guys later.